I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 15th of January, 2023, and this is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua, and I am here filming in the house in Laborio. For those who've been watching the show for more than a few months, you will recognize the lime tree where I have filmed so many times in the courtyard where uh, we spend a lot of time in the back corner where we have coffee every morning. And uh, this is this has been our home for 2022. And today it's Sunday. I came out to the house to film it for you guys. Uh, I wanted to be able to, to really, I love having these ability to look back at our homes over time. Um, and this is my, my chance to say goodbye to the house. And I'm going to film right now myself leaving the house for the very last time. I've got this new setup that I'm trying with this camera here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look down. It is actually already recording, so Fingers crossed that that works. I'm gonna turn you around and walk you out. This is my final, final leaving of our house from 2022. I have a feeling that this uh, this time warp chest cam is gonna be pretty bouncy, but we're going to experiment with it and just see if this is something that works out or how it works. And here I can film myself walking out so you guys can see this on the time lapse later. The view out the front door. There we are, I've got the keys. I have my phone. We're not actually turning the house over until the morning of the 16th, tomorrow, Monday. Paul's gonna do it, but I've locked everything up. We're stepping out onto the street. I'm turning around and I am locking down here this really annoying little thing that we had to do every day. I'm gonna head across the street, which is a very busy road, not missing that, but it is sad saying goodbye to this old house friend. <laughs> he looked at me like I was gonna walk into the street. I was looking, I had to step out into traffic to see if there was traffic to be able to do it. All right, and uh, I'm gonna take you to the segment, but that was it. That was the final me walking out of the house. Now we're gonna zip back in time and I'm gonna give you a tour of the house. It is an absolutely beautiful day out here in Labo Rio where I am back, where I filmed almost all of 2022 and uh, we have now moved to Sutiava as many of you know in uh, early December and uh, our house we've kept the house here in Labo Rio uh, and we are giving it up in the next couple days so I finally got an opportunity the house is empty I'm going to take you through and actually show you the house where we've been living for the last year which I always try to do when we move out of a house and uh, I was really pushing it to have time to be able to do this this year so for those who are interested this is a house uh, my friend Lorenzo is the landlord here he, it's available for rent uh, and we're going to show you guys everything uh, today and tomorrow, and uh, I hope you guys really like it. Now, first of all, you can just see in the background, that is the church of La Barrio right there. So if you're if you're looking at a map or wondering, uh, I'm gonna actually take the camera and point. We have the church right there, and then in between here, that is the school. So most of my filming over the last uh, a year has been done there. We got this house, we moved in on January 23rd, 2022. Now, before I show it all, so this has been our house. This portion here was our original house. And then when we added on, this is an additional four bedroom, four bath apartment unit. And so for most of the time we were here, almost all of it, we had both of these and uh, Paul lived over here and my office was over here. And then Dominic and I and the kids lived over here and we did not have offices. So we're gonna head in now and we had uh, still have fiber internet here, which has been very, very excellent. And both sides are wired together. So if you have any need for that, we're gonna show the front gate here of this nice uh, garden area. Now, unfortunately, because we've been gone for a few months and no one's been taking care of everything, all the plants have dried up. This was lush and green. If you watch my, my episode, like when we had the parrot that was here, that was all really beautiful. This front area is really nice. We like to put some chairs here and sit out on the, on the street like people do and you get the fresh air. Uh, and Dominic and I did that on the first day that we moved in and we really never did it after that, even though it was perfect for that, she doesn't really like sitting out on the road. And so I would always be have to be out here alone and uh, just not very, very popular. I'm gonna show some of the other sides of the street so you have a really good idea of exactly where we've been. If you watch a show all the time, it's really easy to recognize all of this. Uh, this is our pharmacy that's directly across the street. This is the Variedades. So they um, they set up uh, some on, only on some days, and we went months without ever seeing them open. And they're a clothing shop, lots of lots of different things. This is a doctor's office here, and then this shop with all the clothing hanging there. That is our uh, Fritanga where we ate many, many times and I've shown them on the show. I've never seen them with clothes before. That's a new thing. Um, I assume they're doing clothes during the day and the Fritanga in the evening because it's a very popular Fritanga. All right, let's get right to it. Let's head into the house and walk you guys around. 
So one of the things we really liked here, remember this is all empty, uh, so this is meant to be a mixed-use salon and garage. So this will actually open up and you can pull a car in here. We kept a motorcycle in here, and then this is where we kept the billiards table, because Paul has a very large commercial pool table, and that fit in here with lots of extra room, uh, and then we had a couch uh, against this wall as well. So we didn't really use this room too heavily, but it really was the billiard room for the most part, and I think of it as the second uh, living room. Um, and it's, it really is, it's a common um, sound barrier, and hopefully the echo here isn't too bad because of the microphone I'm using, but uh, it's, it's very, very echoey. I'm gonna turn around. Hopefully, hopefully we have enough light. I'm doing this at a very bright day. You can see this is, there's these letters carved into the shelves. Got open air up above, which is really nice. Lots of air into the main salon. So we're gonna come in here and show. So this corner we never really used. Um, for a long time, we, we, we would keep like a chair. We had a little desk sitting here. Uh, that's where that was for most of the time we were here. It was like my secondary office, just when I needed to be here. And then we had the TV in this corner, and then our couches along here. So this was like our little sitting room uh, and where we would hang out. But we really didn't do much because it was so loud because of the street, and it made watching TV really uncomfortable. It just And then you couldn't air condition, you can't close it up. So for us, this never became a, a widely used room. And for whatever reason, we didn't really entertain when we were here. So... Uh, for us, both of these front salons were heavily unused, um, and we never leveraged it like we should have. This is the kitchen. Spent a lot of time in here. Uh, we did have a fridge here. Obviously, this is Nicaragua, so you bring your own appliances. Uh, and we had a big stove that we put in over here. It's supposed to be a little one that fits in the corner, but Dominica wanted a big six burner, and so we used that space. And from here, you have open air windows out into the atrium area and into the main hallway, which we're gonna take you guys out into in a minute. So this was our, and then of course, all open air up here. I'm sure you guys recognize lots and lots of this. Now I came through and opened up all the doors, so hopefully I can show it all to you. I'm gonna finish out here. So we're gonna start by going into the kids' room. So obviously this is the kitchen windows right here, and then we have a bathroom and bodega. Bodega is a storeroom back there. And then that's laundry area in the back. And this is the giant lime tree that you saw in a lot of videos. But first, we're going to go into the master bedroom here. It's going to be very dark. It's just the way it's designed. There's this big mirror. And that, that was here the whole time we were here. And then this is a really good size master. Nothing, nothing absolutely huge, but, but quite large. Uh, all open up here. Now, when we lived here, our maintenance guy, I don't know why it's a little piece of wood, he put a wood all the way across there and we installed air conditioning in here. So this was an air conditioned sealed room and these are all built in, built in closets. I'll just open one up. So you, oh, nope, they're all locked, so I can't show them to you. Maybe, there we go. There's four of them like this. They have little drawers in the bottom and then there's extra storage up above as well. This is very common. You find this all over Nicaragua. And then these are the standard windows go to the outside. So you can close them up for security or for air conditioning, but you can open them up and get air, but they're frosted. So that's normal. Now we have a Jack and Jill bathroom. This was originally the master and a second master, uh, but it was slightly modified. So it has this Jack and Jill with the you can kind of see it. The door doesn't like the open to the, the toilet there. And these are really good sized showers. These are quite large. And we've talked about this one before. This was a suicide, but I don't, sometime before we got it, they removed the suicide, but the wires are still there. So still kind of scary and definitely weird. I just ran into the wall. Okay. If you see the, see the camera jerk around, that's what happened. Okay. When they were cleaning up the house, they accidentally left this. This was a gift to Liesel that got left behind. I'm glad that we grabbed that. This was from my trip to Guatemala and we'll take that with us today. Good thing I have a backpack because I'm walking back. Now this room, this was Liesel's room while we were here. And see, it's very purple. And originally this was one large room, but at some point long, long, long ago, this extra wall was put in the middle. That's a kind of fake wall. And you can see it splits a window. So the whole time we were here, Liesel had a bed right here. And sorry, it's so dark. These are extremely dark rooms. And this is Luciana's room, which was always just crazy dark. She would have a bed in this corner, and this is where she and the cat lived. The cat had its cat litter down there. Again, another window and that fake wall. They didn't have any um, built-in shelves or anything in here, so that was very limiting for them. 
So Luchana comes directly out into this laundry area. This is a very, very standard Nicaraguan laundry system. This exact table is everywhere in the country. And then this old like 1940s school table uh, that was used as a laundry prep space. And then we have the, this is the guest bathroom, uh, the toilet, nothing special. Nice big shower, however. Uh, not a suicide shower, but lots of space and always pretty warm because there's not very much open air here. This would get very, very hot. And then next to it, we have the bodega. I'm hoping you can see this. Yeah, I think it's going to come out. It was just a nice space. We stored all of our like uh, luggage and stuff in there. Nothing, nothing special. And up above, it does have some breathing air. So yes, iguanas and things can get in there, but it also kept things from like cooking. And when you look above, because remember we're in the we're in open air, so you have open air up there. So there's airflow through that part of the house because of that. And then this is the main atrium from the other side. So we come back around. That is the kitchen, and that is the door where we came through. And all these plants were super healthy when we were here, uh, and now they are all dead or very close to dead. This lime tree, absolutely fantastic lime tree. Beautiful, produces so many limes. That was really cool while we were here to have that. And then this tank, we've talked about this a bit. This is a water tank that provides quite a bit of water and warms it up just a little bit. It's not in direct sun, but it does get a little bit of sun and it's black. So it would warm up uh, the water. And uh, when we moved in, there was no water tank. And this part of the city, this old part, the Centro and La Borillo, and uh, Saragossa and areas like that, uh, they have a limited water supply. It turns on and off uh, different times of the year, different times of the day. And so it's really useful if you have your own water tank, you can provide your own pressure. And so you can keep going even though the water's off for the day, uh, it keeps you from completely shutting down. So it's, it's something that you tend to want to have. Uh, and so we added this and uh, and then they reduce the rent. And, th and that's one of the things that we've learned as a trick is if there's something you need and it makes sense, a lot of times landlords aren't gonna pay for it because they would have to front the money and they don't know if it's gonna be worth it. Uh, but if they know you're staying for a long time, say a year, they might take say $50 off per month because you're putting in something big and expensive. You get to use it, it's brand new, it's yours. You get to decide on exactly what you want. They know that if you leave early, they get a free water tank. And if you don't, then yes, they're gonna pay for most of it, but over a long period of time, you're gonna absorb the interest and the upfront and all those things. Everybody tends to win in that sort of scenario. So it's, it's actually a popular approach that really makes sense here, especially if you're an expat who can pretty easily front the cost of something like a water tank and pump. Uh, you may improve their house. They're gonna be able to rent it for more in the future without having to pay full price, at least for the tank, and they get that guarantee that either you're gonna stay long-term, in which case they're happy to, to lower the rent a little bit, or you're going to leave them with a tank that, that they didn't pay completely for, in which case they win in that way. So it tends to be something that they're very happy with. So this is the house where we spent the last year and we were quite comfortable here. We were very happy with it. The location in the middle of the city is excellent. It's very easy to get to everything. We can walk to El Centro in a matter of minutes. We, Lava Rio is a beautiful area. It's a very safe area. Um, we can get to Sutiava in about a five minute walk. Um, uh, El Centro is probably like eight minutes. Saragossa is five or six minutes. Uh, it's just, it's a great area. Um, Guadalupe, probably 10 minutes. Uh, and so restaurants and shopping and easy to get a taxi. Taxis come by. This road in the front, if you're looking on Google Maps, is fourth. I'm gonna take a minute, let's zip off and show a map, hopefully. Uh, fourth is also Main Street, Labo Rio, and it is the southern bypass through the city. So if you're coming from Managua and you need to get out to the beach, for example, this out here is the road that you would go down to get there. It is the one that all the trucks come down and all of that. So uh, lots of traffic, lots of, it's a very central. And then fifth is behind us. Uh, and then uh, just this way is the church. We're very, very close. It's, we're directly against the school, then the church. And we have a pulpery on the corner that I didn't show. So uh, it's weird being back because I actually haven't been here in a month and a half. Uh, but I really wanted to get this filmed because we want to have this memory for the kids so they can go back and be like, oh, I really remember that house. Um, and also, you know, for my father, who has never actually seen a full walk through the house, is a great opportunity for him to see it. And for all of you who've been watching the show all through 2012, we grew from very few people to so many. This house has been central, central to all of that. And I've never really shown it because we lived here and we're so exposed. We didn't want to be like, because if you show anything, it's like, okay, I know where your house is, right? I, all I have to do is turn this camera around just that fast. You see that pharmacy sign across the street, you know where we live. So got to be got to be a little bit conscientious about that stuff, but 
in general, this has been a, a really fantastic house and it was a great introduction to city living in Nicaragua for us. And this is gonna be a really great memory uh, for us and the kids for, for the rest of our lives. That this was, this was a major place that we lived um, compared to a lot of the, we've moved around a lot, right? We lived all over Europe. We've lived in Granada, Nicaragua. We've lived in Panama, uh, but here, you know, we live for a year on the beach and then we live for a year here in this house. And this is one of those big pieces of stability that uh, for Liesl and Luciana is going to be, when they look back at their childhood, this will be this will feature pretty prominently, um, even though we didn't live in it nearly as long as we lived in the house in, uh, uh, in Carrollton, Texas, or even the one in Peekskill, New York. Uh, this one was a couple years older. Uh, so this is really where Liesl was 13 primarily, her first year of teenage, and where uh, Luciana was 11. That, that's old enough that they're going to really have a solid memory of this. And of course they'll remember the house in Carrollton, but already most of the houses in Europe, uh, the house in Granada, the, the house in Peekskill, New York, all of those are forgotten to Luciana. She knows about them, but she has no real memory of them. Sometimes she gets like glimpses. And I know what it's like. I lived in a farmhouse until I was uh, almost eight. And my memories of the farmhouse are pretty solid because I had eight years without going anywhere else, but they're also really fuzzy. I don't have that many memories of the farmhouse. Most of my memories are from the house that we built after that and had for a really long time. Um, and so having places that feature in my children's memory, places that they're able to associate with portions of their lives and places that they're able to really think about things that happened there and and, and in, it potentially come back and visit when they're older, right, is, is important. Because we move around so much, um, the way that we think about houses, the way that we think about home and locations has to be treated a little bit differently. And uh, I think this place is going to be a good memory that they're going to have for a long time. And this is, well, he didn't get the cat here, but this is where the cat grew up from being a tiny kitten into being a cat and she used to climb up this tree and hide in the tree to get away from the dogs. And uh, yeah, this is, this is our house in La Borio, Leon, Nicaragua, our first real long-term city home here in the country and uh, a really important part of our lives. Now coming up tomorrow, I'm gonna take you guys through the apartments on the other side and I'll talk about all of that. You guys have seen a lot more of that uh, in other uh, videos, but uh, I think in a less comprehensive way. So we're gonna head over there and uh, I'm gonna film that now, but you guys are gonna see it tomorrow. I'm not gonna pile this all into one episode. All right, that was our tour. I hope that you enjoyed that. I know it was a little bit, a little bit of me reminiscing. I always find it really hard when we move out of a house. Um, and if you watch the episode where we left Carrollton, that was so much harder, right? This is one year and we own a place not far away, and we knew this was temporary, we knew it was rental, but our house in Carrollton is where uh, Liesl grew up, it's where Luciana was born. So many really big memories happened there, and we were there for so long, and we owned it for much longer than we lived there, that it created this, this real sense of home uh, that when we, we moved out of there, I was, I was really in tears, like sitting in the spot in the living room where we, Liesl and I were talking when we got the news it was time to go get Luciana from the hospital when she was born and the place where you know we played our first video game together the place where we did our first this or that or whatever like all these things in that house um, where we got our dogs it was the it was the last place we lived with Oreo the first place we lived with Clive and Mia and just so much of that kind of stuff so many really huge life moments happened in that house, including that was the house where we spent 2011 planning our big trip to Europe that led to us moving abroad. And that was the house where we planned and bought our, our hotel in Nicaragua and began our permanent move abroad. And, and like that is the house where all those things happened um, and where Dominica and I spent the majority of our, of our uh, married life together so far, right? Because we've only been married, well, we've only been together for 21 years. We were there for 11 of that, and we were a lot of other places, right? New York, multiple places in New York, New Jersey. Um, so everything else was fragmented. This was the one big piece. Giving that up was really, really hard for me emotionally and for the kids. And, and for me, knowing that the kids, it was hard to give it up. All that uh, was, was very difficult. Um, but this, this is much easier. It's still very hard. It's still, it's a place of memories that, that we'll no longer have. So, so thank you so much for bearing with me as I shared the house with you. I hope that you guys like that part and that you appreciate that this is an important bit of recording who we are and who we were at this point in our lives. 
um, because this is a vlog and this is um, you know a way for me to share where we are with my father and a way to record where we were for my children who you know very easily in 10 15 years are going to come back and watch this episode and be like oh yes this is the episode that allows me to connect to that house and i remember a lot more now what it was like being there and, and moving out so thanks for joining all right the house has been toured and I am on my walk back home, and look who it is. It's Charlie, the dog who used to walk with me every morning with my dogs. Oh, he just yelped at me. He has not seen me in a month and a half, and uh, that's very sad. That's one of the things that ends up happening is leaving all the animals behind. Now, he does have a family here. This is his family actually out on these chairs. Rarely see them. Buenas tardes. But uh, in our year, Oh, adio. Oh, that was his real name. That was the first time I heard his real name in the entire year that we lived here. That's really funny. Ah, all right. So today is Sunday and uh, spent the morning just uh, did a little tiny bit of work and uh, mostly got to relax. Uh, yesterday was so much work that I really had no opportunity to chill at all yesterday and uh it was just it was just exhausting so today i really wanted to take some time to just do nothing buenas tardes uh and and my plan had been to come out and film the house yesterday and that had not worked out at all so i had to put in a bunch of effort to do it today and i didn't have any schedule of a ride and i don't want to pay for a taxi because oh it just drives me crazy and i do need to get some exercise so i am just out walking through the neighborhood and I'm going to walk back to Sutiava. That is my plan. It is kind of hot, not hot, hot. It's actually a really pleasant day, but it's hot to have this because I've got a whole camera backpack thing going on. And Charlie has come back to join me. He always, always goes wherever I am. And um, I'm just going to turn this around so you can remember this particular block. Actually, I'm going to do a quick walk here because there is a house for rent that we showed on the show. So now I'm walking the wrong way. Aren't I smart? Yeah. So there's a house that we showed on the show some time ago, and this is the block that we're on, and it is still available for purchase. What is there this? And uh, I just want to show it for you guys to remind you, because today's episode, of course, showing my house from Labo Rio, which is also available for rent. Now, this is this one that I'm about to show you is available for purchase, and they were asking if you remember $100,000. And of course, we said you would not have to pay $100,000. You would pay less than that, but we don't know what you would get it for, uh, but that is the asking price. My personal guess is much closer to 60, but 80 is probably more realistic. I'm also gonna turn around and show this Dymark printing business it's a sublimation printing business never seen anyone actually go there this is the house right here we have an entire episode on it i will do my best to link it that is the say vende number i'm going to say it eight nine six zero one five seven eight and uh marcella has spoken to them she does have contact with them if anyone is interested in purchasing this house we do have the ability to talk to them and get additional information get you into contact with whoever so you can negotiate obviously do not talk to an agent talk directly to the people who are selling the house and deal with it that way and you'll get a far better price a far better deal and uh actually know what's going on and they will probably get a better deal as well if nothing else it just lowers the overhead but also increases communications all right i am going to hit the road start walking i've got this camera going i'm really interested to see it's going to be weird it kind of points off to the side and it's kind of it bounces a lot uh it's going to take some playing with and i think it's got this camera in the camera in the shot a lot so that's going to be interesting uh but it's it's gonna be, it's a pleasant day and i'm looking forward to a nice walk through sutiava and my plan because i don't have any waters so i'm going to stop at an am pm or a super express whatever's out there in sutiava and uh, just get grab a cold drink on the way and then i will be in great shape I'm sad that I just said goodbye to the house. I'm sad that this is my my last time walking through this neighborhood being in some way a resident of this neighborhood. I mean, I live so close. I can, I'm walking to my new house, right? So it's not tragic. It's not like I can never come back here. But there is a big difference between, you know, uh, my house in La Barrio is obviously right behind me on the street behind my head and uh, and coming through Buenos Aires. And, uh, and, and coming as a as a remote visitor versus being someone local who lives right here. So another chapter of our lives has closed. Uh, my afternoon is gonna be uploading lots of videos. I did a lot with the iPhone 2 today, the, as well, Tambien, not the iPhone 2. I do not have an old iPhone 2. Uh, the iPhone 13 mini uh, also, I filmed some 
So I have a lot of footage that I took today, and uh, hopefully that will do a really good job of helping us remember this beautiful home that we had here in La Barrio. And of course, this beautiful home that I, I love the colors on this one, and I love the style on this one. It's just, it's just really nice. This is a great street. Uh, this, is, this is Calle Dos here in La Barrio. We're going to hit the road and head that way now. And uh, I'll see you more this afternoon. Hopefully I can get out and do a little bit of a walk and show you more this afternoon. But uh, today's video is all about the house here in La Barrio. So uh, any walk we do this afternoon will be on tomorrow's video. All right, let's go. I did not get an opportunity to go back and record any more this evening, but I did get a ton of recording all afternoon uh, for other days. So it was a very busy day. I went and recorded tomorrow's video, which is going to be the stuff next door. I recorded a long walk. I record the walk that I did uh, got put on the 12th. So starting several days ago, three days ago, uh, you've been seeing the footage that I was recording today. So I did hours and hours of recording um, and you're gonna see those over, have been seeing them and will continue seeing them for at least one more day uh, of I think pretty interesting stuff all over Sutiava, all over Labo Rio, showing the house, showing the apartments. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoy the walkthrough and for a, a, a three bedroom two bath really large two giant living rooms in the middle of the city with a big courtyard a good sized kitchen that water tank $350 a month for all that is fantastic that is that is you know if you fit into the three bedroom thing and you're able to put in air conditioning if that's something you want it doesn't come with it you can add air conditioning and that's what we did we put in two units and that worked fine we did find that the living rooms were a little bit warm so we didn't tend to use them that much but beautiful spaces you can do a lot with that if you were going to really you know put in a lot of sound deadening or put in a fans or whatever we didn't do any of that but those are things you could do and really get a lot more out of the space so consider that if that's something that you're interested in but 350 dollars gives you a really good feel this is a high cost not the highest el centro is going to be more expensive but this is the most expensive of the barrios uh and it is extremely close to downtown you can look at the map that's fourth on the north fifth on the south you can walk to the church in seconds you can be in el centro uh, seven minutes tops to like the club district. So um, if you want to be able to walk to restaurants and stuff, it's hard to beat uh, that area in, in Northeast La Barrio. And so uh, I think this is um, a great feel for just how well and spacious you can live being so close uh, to the center of the city. So if that's something you want, um, hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to support the channel, of course, buy me a coffee. That comes directly to me. Uh, uh, share this on social media. Tell your friends. Tell people, especially these, these shows where we're like really getting into real estate, giving you real information, like real numbers, what you could actually get. I mean, this is a real place that's available for rent. If you're watching this right now and you're interested, I can get you into contact with Lorenzo. This isn't like through me or anything. I'll just put you in contact with uh, Lorenzo who owns the house and uh, he would love to get that rented out. Again, um, I don't know, it will go fast. It's a highly desirable house, uh, but it is at this moment, uh, by the time this video shows, we will have turned over the keys and it will be uh, ready to rent again. So. Thanks, everybody. I will see you with a tour of the apartments next door to this house, which is student housing, so it's going to be very different. We're going to tour that tomorrow.